Who is this? I haven't seen two kudu grooming this affectionately in many, many, many months. And it's quite nice now. Also, there's a bit of backlight coming from behind them. That's just highlighting their manes and their ears. And there is a young male somewhere here, too, who's missing out on the grooming at the moment. I'll have to try and get catch up and get involved. Very nice. Thank you, guys. That was cool. It seems that they've stopped their grooming for now, although that other one does seem like she might be starting. And here's our young male. I've just spotted him next to the road. Oh. And typical with Kudu, as soon as you start the car, they tend to bounce off and run away into the thicket. So we can't show you the young male that was right next to the road because he's disappeared. And so we'll take the cue from the Kudu and let's go back across to Taylor, who I think has made her way back to the ever so lazy, sleepy Tinior. Oh my goodness, what perfect timing as he does a big rollover. Oh, and a stretch! Now he wants to make me stretch when he does that. Well, we're starting to see more and more movement with our fellow friend over here. And, well, this light is actually beautiful. He's also got golden locks now in the golden light. Isn't that beautiful? But it's slightly messy here. It doesn't seem to have groomed himself very well over the past few days. He's definitely missed a few spots. Maybe they're just because it's spots that he can't necessarily reach. He's in need of spending some time perhaps with his brothers or the Unkahuma pride and do a bit of bonding with them. Then he might be able to get someone to groom, groom him on his behalf. But it's always tougher for the male lions. We see the lionesses have a very strong bond between the various members of the pride and they'll often use grooming as a way to strengthen the bond and I'm sure Tristan has told you all about that since you had such a lovely sighting of kudu grooming each other which is quite nice because a kudu don't normally always stand still for very long always darting off into the thicket there we go stretching his legs out now and all we need him to do is to give us a big yawn and and well get into the sitting position and then we'll be closer to seeing him start to move hopefully well that's what I'm hoping but he hasn't done much other way now Mr. P from Canada you're wondering if this lion would go after a kudu even though he's full yes most certainly because remember lions most like uh, the rest of the predators out here are opportunistic feeders so they never know when their next meal is going to come around just look at the Nkuhumas. They actively try to pursue various animals during the middle of the night and even during the day, but haven't come up successful. I'm not sure if they managed to catch a meal. So, in a case like this, he's lucky. He probably doesn't have food on the mind. That's not his priority. It's sleeping and digesting at the moment. However, if something were to walk up towards him, a warthog, and this area is good for warthog, lots of termite mounds, that have got holes dug into the side of them, so good denning spots. We saw Kudu just on the other side of the drainage line, slightly earlier uh, in the drive. But if they came towards him, he'll definitely make an attempt. He might not sort of go after something uh, if it is on the other side of the drainage line. He might give that a skip, but I don't think he knew that those Kudu were there. Uh, I don't think he necessarily smelt them. The wind is slowly swirling. It's actually picking up again all of a sudden. It was dying down at one point. And I don't think he could hear him because of that breeze. I think those could were very lucky and they, they managed to, to scoot on off. But like I said, there could still be many other animals that come around here. Chelepan is not particularly far. So they'd, be go, they'd go down there to have a drink. And then they might, animals might settle off and go home and, and like I said there's only a lot of water around here we've actually actually haven't seen water here for the last few days maybe they have moved their burrow which is a bit sad well for Tinyol and for if any leopards around here because they're a good snack they're looking very healthy at the moment now you can hear lots of birds shouting there's a Franklin's they've been sort of shouting like this for most of the time that we've been in the sighting so I don't know what's in this drainage line I know I was talking, well, we were talking earlier about the male and female leopard tracks that were coming in this direction. We've actually seen Tengana and Karula once mating down in this drainage system. And actually, we've seen 
Tingana in this drainage system on a number of different occasions. So I wonder if he isn't just in here and perhaps it's just the birds every now and then as they move along just alarming here and there. We might go and investigate in a moment because it doesn't, now it doesn't look like he's going to do anything just yet. Should we go and do that Seb? Mm. I think so. Let's go and see if we can figure out where these Franklins are. Let's make that our mission. We'll come back to this Birmingham boy. We won't go far. I don't want to go too far either because it is getting to that that hour where he's going to potentially start moving. Oh, we don't want to go there, otherwise we get swatted. Am I going to be able to reverse through this gap? Let's see. It's one thing going through trees going forwards, reversing through a gap is a completely different story. Just turn my, turn the car that way. Don't go too far. Okay, so we're going to go down towards Twin Dams now, well, just over here into this drainage line and see if we can figure out what these Franklins are, well, it's got their feathers so ruffled. Meantime, we're going to go back to the Mara with James and his herd of elephants. Can you guess what animals we have? Well, of course you can. Um, unfortunately, Taylor told you. There they are. Some elephants, slightly different angle. They're down towards a fairly well substantial drainage line. The one I was oh, excuse me, the one I was talking to you about earlier that feeds into the Mara River, and its catchment, of course, is the Ola escarpment, uh, just around where we live, and where we live is Angama Mara, which is just over there. Beautiful, beautiful camp. Now, Paul, you want to know if those elephants will cross the Mara River. They will absolutely cross the river. They will cross it often. And they're not the only ones, actually. The lions, too, will swim the river fairly regularly. Uh, not if they're very little, but they will. Apparently, the Angama Pride has both has been seen the other side of the river, as has the Olo Lo 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 Pride, and so we think that the, and certainly the Paradise Pride has found both sides of the river regularly, and so yes, they do cross the river. Um, buffalo, I imagine, do the same sort of thing. We know, of course, that the wildebeest and zebra and topi and Thompson's gazelles take their lives in their hands crossing the river. But I've often wondered why it is that something like a lion would not see a river like the Mara as a boundary. Because there's no reason a lion shouldn't be taken by a crocodile. I suppose that they have, well, more sharp, more sharper defensive mechanisms than something like a wildebeest does, so perhaps the crocodiles avoid them. see the wind just starting to pick up a little bit as the weather comes back in from the south it's not very close by I think we're we're pretty we're pretty safe at the moment Don are you wondering if the animals ever react badly to thunderstorms well it's interesting uh, you know when the storm broke today and we had this enormous clattering down of hail at one stage um, there was certainly some reaction, there was some running around, we were almost in amongst the wildebeest and zebra and we certainly had a little bit of reaction from the zebra we were around, that we were around, they started running and then as we came closer to the north, the one thing I did notice was a sort of large flock of ostrich and this large flock of ostrich seemed to be uh, aligning themselves almost in a sort of defensive posture as the storm came towards them. So, yes, I imagine that some various animals have different strategies to look, you know, to survive during big thunderstorms and that sort of thing, but I don't think that there's necessarily a huge amount they can do. Some will head for the thicker bush, definitely, to try and stay away and get away from clattering rain. But, you know, out on the plains, if the big storms come, there's not much you can do except grin and bear it. Righty, what we're going to do now, there's just a, a little 
well, there's a corner, basically. There's nothing fancy about a corner. There's a corner, and just above the corner, there's a water hole, and next to the water hole, there's a shepherd's tree, and in that shepherd's tree was where we saw the Angama lioness earlier on, and we actually watched her hunt. This was long before we came live. We watched her hunt an impala who unfortunately saw her, and, well, not unfortunately for him, it was very nice for him, he escaped. So we're going to go up and see what's happening there now. Let's head across now to a water hole in the winter in the Sabi sand. Well, we are at a water hole, probably the biggest water hole that we have out here. It is the beautiful Chitra Dam, and we have a magnificent view of one of my favorite birds of prey. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So that is an African fish eagle in perfect afternoon light, and it is sitting eye level with us, which is unusual. We don't normally get that sort of perspective on our eagles. Normally, we're below them, and so we have a situation where we kind of look up at them. So to be at the same height as them is very cool and this eel just flew up there and landed it was sitting actually on the dam wall itself and it's now probably using that as a way to look for food you'll find that they'll hunt at this time of the day if you look at its neck area there's no swollen crop which would indicate that it's eaten so in all likelihood it hasn't actually fed during the day today and so it might be looking for food this is a time that they will hunt I also see a couple of hippos that are out of the water that are walking around in the background they've started to move and there's a little baby that's playing by the looks of it with its mom there we go you can see there's a little tiny one just to the left there oh isn't that cool so lots of games that is happening at the moment and you'll find the hippos it's also getting cooler now so they're going to start waking up and starting to move out and starting to get up to go and feed so lots of them about and there we go more playing <laughs> and you'll find when they play like this they'll porpoise all over the place chase one another around there'll be big mouths being open from time to time and it's all just fun and games. Those are mostly young hippos. It's almost like a little crash area. You've got three or four youngsters that are there with the big adults. And then there's the rest of the pod, the side closest to us. Which are completely unperturbed by the fish eagle. And the fish eagle unperturbed by them as well. At the end of the day, they don't need to really worry about one another. Now, Rachel, you're wondering what the wingspan is of a fish eagle and I can tell you now I'm not 100% sure but I shall give you two seconds I will be able to tell you it is 1.9 meters so the wingspan is 1.9 meters which would be in feet would be about eight feet seven feet seven feet somewhere around there um, so quite a big wingspan they're not the largest of the eagles that we get here but still got quite big wings and the reason why they don't have to have as big a wingspan as what you'd find with things like the martial eagle or the vultures is that they don't ride thermals and have to go as high as a lot of the other eagles they tend to be hunting just above the water surface and so they kind of just come down and grab and they don't need as big a wings to catch thermals to get up to be able to spot prey from long long sort of distances like the vultures or like I say martial eagles or crowned eagles or oh, actually crowned eagles have quite short wings as well in comparison to their body size but the light on that fish eagle is perfect you can see the browns and the darker sort of black trailing edges to the wing that bright yellow face and the wind is blowing a crest at the moment they generally don't have that crested head but you can see the wind is fluffing those feathers and that's why they're ending up with that sort of crest developing and I must say, Chitwa Dam at this time of the day is one of the most beautiful places to be. There's this gold light that gets cast across the dam itself. It's a pity that this afternoon is a little bit on the windy side, but generally you have lots of activity with the hippos, and you'll find that at this time of the day, sometimes you'll see elephants coming down to drink. There's a number of water buck that are all over the place, up on the open area to the left there, so they all started to come down. And the reason why they'll spend time in that open is because it's going to be much easier to see predators as we start going into the night now in this open section than it would be in the thicket so a lot of the animals are going to start coming down you can see some impalas in the background as well wouldn't be surprised if there's an odd water standing around I can also see a wildebeest right at the back which would be very difficult for Craig to show you because of the aerials but there's also a wildebeest so a number of different species all hanging around the dam and that's why Chitwa Dam is just one of the best places to spend an afternoon particularly on hot afternoons if you come here just at sunset there always tends to be quite a lot going on and you can imagine for the animals it must almost be like an oasis particularly in the winter months 
And then there's this dry, barren landscape, and they come down to here, and there's this massive water, and there's some big trees that can provide shade on the open clearings. It's the perfect place for everyone, and for us too. And I'm quite impressed with our fish eagle. I would have thought our fish eagle might fly. There we go. How cool is that? Look, look. Oh, is he going to land on the wall? He is. There we go. Well done, Craig. That was very good. Did you see the wings? Beautiful. That was very cool. Not every day you're going to get a fish eagle coming down like that. And I wonder what it's spotted there. I wonder if there's not something just on the edge of the water that it might come down and have a look at. I'm just going to get my binos out. Sometimes you'll find with fish eagles is that they will have that is a little bit too heavy for them. So if they've caught something like a catfish and the catfish is too big, then they drag it to the edge of the water and it could be that another vehicle that was here just now came from that side and chased it off its kill and that's why it's landed there again because it seems to be looking down towards the edge of the water. I can't see anything with my binoculars though. So James, sorry Dave, sorry. <laughs> No worries, Megan. Don't worry. I also make, we also make mistakes from time to time. But Dave, um, their diet pretty much consists of fish. That's the sort of majority of what they'll eat. I have seen them take monitor lizards. Um, I've even seen them with guinea fowl before, which is quite an odd one. But generally, it would be fish. So they would target fish more than anything else. And in this sort of system that we're in, catfish are probably the easiest. The catfish come up to breathe air from time to time. So you'll find in the water there's these swirls, and they spend a lot of time right on the surface, and it makes it a lot easier for the fish eagles to grab them. It's also a big meal. Some of the catfish that in this particular your water hole will easily weigh 30 40 pounds so that's a big 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 meal for a fish eagle and they have to be a little bit careful particularly in a dam like this with vlad and boris that are around because if it's one of those really large catfish it actually becomes so heavy that they can't lift. they almost swim themselves back to shore to try so they have to catch things that are a little bit smaller and generally the target sort of size for the fish eagles from what I've witnessed and, and being a Chitwa and watching these fish eagles hunt a lot they'll normally go after fish that are around sort of 10 pounds now it sounds like gremlins are jumping on board as the wind is gusting and we're going to lose signal so let's go quickly across to Taylor who's still with her beautiful tenure We actually left it all. He's morphed into a squirrel. <laughs> Tenure the squirrel. Off he goes. <laughs> Not quite. We actually decided to go around and see if we could find um, find anything that was causing those Franklins to be a bit more chirpy than they normally would. There's another squirrel. There it goes. Ew, two racing squirrels. Off they go. They are so quick. There were three of them that ran down the road there. That was nice. And we will just watch the squirrels run today until Tino decides to wake up. We can go back to him, of course. But well, we're just bumbling about looking for other things while he sleeps soundly. There's only so much one can say about a sleeping lion. <laughs> ah, squirrel, I see you. Look at this. It's up there in the tree. Look, look, look. Oh, no. They are so quick. They're magnificent. They're so good at moving around. There it is. It's just actually looking at us. Where that knot is. Oh, you may have just seen it bounce back. Let's see if it pops its head up again. Sorry, Megan, can I have that question again? Where have we gone, squirrel? Surely it's going to pop out. No, sorry, I'm just listening to a question from Megan and trying to figure out where these squirrels have gone, but they're hiding from us now. I don't think we're going to win with them. It's very rude squirrels. I was complimenting how fast you could run and now you just leave me. So we have a question from young Tula Ann. Tula Ann, it feels like it's been ages since I last heard from you, my blonde haired friend. And, uh, well, I've got many blonde haired friends that watch the show, but you're one of my favorite, but shh. Anyone. And Tesla, my two blonde haired girls. Right, anyways, your question was where have all the puppies gone? Now, we think you mean the wild dogs. I know we haven't seen the wild dogs in such a long time. I keep saying every morning I go out, please, 
please let us see a flash of white going across the bush and not be a kudu or a nyalo or bush buck's white tail and hope that it's the tip of a wild dog's tail darting chasing after something but uh, no I don't know where they all are they must be around somewhere maybe they'll come back but it's also not uncommon they do this to us all the time they leave us and then they make Tristan and I and Ali and Byron or we all miss them so much, but eventually they come back and then they put big smiles on our faces. Now I wonder if Tinyo is going to put a big smile on my face because according to my watch, it says that he should have his head up now, looking around, yawning, but we'll see. I said actually 4.30 that he'd be sitting up, he's not sitting up. Sebastian said 5 and we're getting closer to 5 o'clock now. So maybe Sebastian, you're going to be right here. But sure. <laughs> He's still so flat. Tinyo, you better do something spectacular like raw for us tonight if I'm going to invest so much time in the sighting. Oh, I saw his tail flick. Oh my goodness. Huge excitement happening right now. He's obviously heard what I've said because he's staring at me now. He's giving me the evil eye. Saying, Taylor, you better watch yourself. <laughs> Let's get a better view of him though. I'm not going to be swatted in the face again by the same tree. We just look away mm, and we'll go through this gap where well, there's a break in the grass is that it yeah I think that's the one so you can see he hasn't really moved at all it almost looks like he's actually sunk further into the ground now he's becoming one with the soil he looks very much like the color of the ground and I do love this time of the year obviously I talk about winter I even talk about winter and summer and how much I love it but one of the reasons why I do love it is just because of the colors and I think that the lions are definitely the color of autumn or typically a male lion with a bit of darkness in his mane very pretty and with those golden yellow eyes they just look exactly like the large fruited bush willow leaves at the moment Perhaps we'll have to find the large fruited bush willow leaf that's nice and yellow so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But his breathing has not slowed down at all. He's still trying to, well, digest all of that food that's in his belly now. But at least he's looking healthy, which I suppose is a good thing. Minoski? That's a cool name. We were wondering why he is breathing so heavily. Well, we were chatting about it earlier and it's just because... When a lion or any of the cats gorge themselves, so their whole digestive system is designed that they can eat large quantities of meat in a very short period of time. And they digest it fairly quickly too. But that bulging stomach puts a lot of pressure on his other organs, like his diaphragm, so he's not able to take a deep breath. So he's got to do these short sort of... <laughs> well he just proved me wrong there did you see he, he took one deep breath <laughs> that was so funny a big sigh and probably thinking ah oh, Taylor has no idea what she's talking about these silly guys they say all these things but none of them are true so that's why he takes these those short sort of breaths and look at that big stretch yes pause to the sky please and he's smiling Tula and he's smiling for you yes there we go now you can see his lovely teeth and how he doesn't brush them. Naughty. And his tongue is also sticking out. He looks very relaxed at the moment. Maybe he's at that part where his alarm has gone off, but he's pressing snooze. Now we just have to figure out how many times he's going to press the snooze button before he eventually sits up and realizes that he has to get to work. Yay, Tesla, I was just about to ask Megan. I was about to say, Megan, has young Tesla been watching today? Because I haven't heard any questions for her, but she's, she's pulled through. She's asked a question now. Tesla's also one of our other young viewers, and she was wondering, why isn't he lying in the shade? Well, Tesla, he doesn't need to worry about laying in the shade anymore because the sun is almost disappearing behind the horizon. So you can see there. And that's the go-away bird shouting in the background as well. There's the sun just in the corner behind some trees. So it's not hot anymore. He only wants to lay in the shade during the heat of the day. When it's too hot, then he'll find a spot to keep himself nice and cool. But for now, he doesn't have to worry about that. And that's why Tesla I'm getting so excited is because 
this is the time that he should wake up but he's still getting there he's not quite ready just yet and that's all right you can't force yourself to get up and he really doesn't have a schedule either he just does what he wants when he wants all day long I don't know if I'd like to live like that would you Sebastian no. Nah, I like having a schedule and I like having... It's too boring. It is too boring, hey? I'd be lazy. I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, that's a that's so attractive, Tino, when you pull a face like that. And then, of course, it's not. It's, it almost looks like he's half snarling, but he isn't. He's still swatting away at the flies. Come on, boy, open your eyes. Give us a big yawn. Sebastian, should we see if we yawn, if he yawns? <laughs> Now, seeing as though we're watching this young fella laze about on, is it Wednesday? Yes, it is Wednesday, on this Wednesday afternoon. Jack, you're wondering, do, just, do lions just sleep all day? They can, especially if they've eaten a big meal, like uh, he's been feasting on a zebra carcass for a couple of days. So, yeah, they will. They'll sleep up to 18 to 20 hours every single day, and particularly the maximum length, too, if they have uh, caught something. So he actually might not even get up at all. You never know. Maybe he's just going to hang around here, go for a drink of water, come back and go to sleep again. But I doubt it. But you never know. You've always just got to a, a add a what if because there's always a what if in nature. But yeah, he'll just rest for now. He's been resting since... When did he lay down officially? Probably at about quarter past nine. He sat down because we, we had him towards the end of the sunrise safari this morning. He was moving. He had a drink of water at uh, Treehouse Dam. He'd come from uh, Hoffman's and then he walked all the way over here, which is not far, maybe about a kilometre, a kilometre and a half as the crow flies or the route that he's taken from from Treehouse Dam. And then he's been resting for most of the day. So what is the time now? Almost basically five o'clock. We'll just say it's five o'clock. Let's go. So let's go with Hoppers now. Hoppers 9, Hoppers 10, Hoppers 11, Hoppers 12, Hoppers 1, 2, 3. So he's been sleeping for seven and a half hours now that's pretty that's a pretty good nap don't you think i reckon he should have enough energy to get up at least to go and walk to chele pan and have a drink of water i'll be very happy with that even i, I tell you i don't want to put too much pressure on you don't have to roar for us though everybody would like it if you roared for them but if you would just go up and drink some water that would be very nice as well Here's some crested Franklins coming into the sighting now too. I don't think they even know that the lion is here. They're my favorite sneaking into sighting. They're just over here. They're going to walk right up to him. Let's see how long it's going. I think I might have to do the matrix <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you can see them. There they are. Yes. Let's see. I'm actually going to, let's just sit quietly because I know what they're going to do. They might panic at the sound of my voice too. Well, I won't, I won't stop talking. I'll just whisper. And I wonder how much of a fright they're going to get or if they're just going to sneak past. They haven't seen him yet. To me, these birds are not the most intelligent birds. I don't know, they, they always seem like they're not concentrating when they should concentrate. And then they get massive frights. They're not far. This one is great. <laughs> He's going full speed ahead towards the line. Having a little dig, found something delicious to eat over there. Oh my goodness. How many are there? One, two, three, four. Now there's there's four now. Look at this. Look at this going right towards the lion. The lion the, this thing is about three meters away from the lion now. Look at that. Let's see what they're going to do. If they've spotted it yet. The one in front has gone. I think something slightly suspicious here, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Tinio's reacting to them now. He can obviously hear them. Oh my goodness. Look, there's the tip of his tail. Not that these would be too much... That's those crested Franklins calling. They still don't know he's there. They have no idea. He's so camouflaged. Well, now they look a little bit hesitant. We're like, oh, that's a strange looking termite mound. 
<laughs> yes. You silly birds. It's a big male lion laying over there. Now they've realized. <laughs> they probably went, oh, Frank, not again. We <laughs> stared death right in the face. Well, not even the Franklins could disturb Tenure this afternoon. He literally just twitched an ear. He didn't even open his eyes. He didn't pop his head up. He didn't do anything. So I reckon if that's not going to wake him up, then, well, who knows what will. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go from one sleepy lion back across to James, who have found some lions that are slightly more playful. We are having a wonderful time here. We've just managed to come across the cubs of the Angama Pride. Now, these are the three little teddy bears. I think that they are about ooh, six or seven weeks old, maybe eight weeks, but I, I think they're younger than eight weeks. Uh, well, I've been saying that now, of course, for two weeks. So let's put them at around eight weeks old. But Jamie managed to find another three the other night, even smaller than this lot, and probably only about three or four weeks old. And they're somewhere in this Zaga, which of course is uh, another way of saying erosion gully, uh, somewhere around here as well. I don't know where exactly, but there is another lioness to the right hand side of where the little cub is sitting. Uh, you might just see the top of her there, and I wonder if her little ones aren't somewhere close by as well. In fact, Ferg, if you go to the right, if you don't mind, there's a hole there in the bank. Zoom in there, yeah. No, that's not really a hole, is it? It's just more a sort of ditch. Anyway, let's go back to the cubs and see what they're up to. There they are. Just very nice. And when Jamie found them, I thought, I said to her, listen, are you sure they're not the same ones? Because I just couldn't believe that there would be so many cubs in a pride of four lionesses. And Jamie very, oh, this is just magnificent. Jamie very cleverly pointed out, of course, that um, she had identified all the lionesses. And these ones, their mother's got a scuffed yeah, on the left, I think. Left or right, her ears look pretty intact, but that might not necessarily be the mother. She's certainly long-suffering, whatever she is. There she goes. She's definitely lactating, so she is a mother. As you say, this is enormously adorable. Watching tiny little cubs like this is a very special experience always. Look at that. Scratching their little elbow, her little elbow, which isn't so little, it's very powerful of course. Look at that. That's wonderful. <laughs> and you can see now how perfectly coloured they are, how perfectly camouflaged, how their colour, I think, was designed for them to be in this environment. Of course they can be in an environment like the Kruger where it's a bit thicker, they've got lots more to hide behind and around and through. But here, they are just designed to move through this grass, which is exactly the same colour as they are. Yes, they... Sorry, let's, let's just have that again. I think I missed it. Oh! Exquisite bliss, you say they're big for eight weeks old. No, they're not. They're about the same size, and you know, in a month's time, you won't believe how much bigger they'll get. Their first little while, they grow quite slowly. And eight, eight weeks is about how old they are. 
maybe very slightly younger, so maybe seven weeks, but I don't think so. I think they're about eight weeks old. Oh, this is very, very special. Ah, now John, you say, how vital is this play fighting? And will one of the cubs struggle more than one of, than the others? Um, John, it's absolutely crucial, as is play behavior in every single mammal species and a few uh, bird species, I believe, but largely in the mammals. It, it does a few things for them. It fixes the social order, although amongst these cubs, of course, there's very little dominance behavior. It's largely play behavior. In other animals, like baboons or human beings, for example, play behavior most certainly does establish a dominance hierarchy. It'll do the same with hyenas. But with lions, of course, there isn't really a dominant hierarchy. Uh, it's very much all equal in the pride. The other very important role that it plays, of course, and it's why kids do it more than adults do it, uh, as humans and in most other species, the reason is that they need to develop their muscles, they need their nervous systems to sort of finalize all the different connections that have to be made. You know, it's, it's all a time for the brain to learn to tell the muscles what they have to do and for those muscles to then develop. And that's why this play behavior is so absolutely crucial. And it's also why adults don't engage in it. They don't need to. Their muscles are developed. Their nervous systems are completely as they should be. And so they don't worry too much about it. Mm, now, Jack, you say, well, lionesses take care of each other's cubs. Well, they do, to a certain extent, in that they will cross-suckle, they'll suckle each other's cubs. But they don't... It's not like they with elephants, where a youngster will be adopted by a mother. But that said, in a pride of lions, if a lactating female was killed and there was another lioness with sufficient milk, they would absolutely survive. They're in, in fact, to the detriment of that lioness's cubs. So the more, do let's pretend, for example, here's an interesting example. We haven't seen the other tiny ones today, but let's pretend that this lioness died. She's the mother of these three, and they started to suckle on the milk from the other lioness that has the three cubs. Well, what you'd probably find is that they'd outcompete those little ones for their mother's milk, and you'd probably find that the ones to suffer would almost certainly be the younger cubs, even though their mother was the one that was lactating and supplying milk. Sorry, I was a little bit distracted by a vehicle driving at roughly the same speed as the blue flame. Right, we're going to have to leave here in two minutes because then we're going to have to rush up to the top of the hill. So let's just enjoy them for another two minutes and then we'll head across away. Very special. All right, we're going to hand you back to Tristan, who I believe is knocking about at uh, certainly one of the places I've visited more often than I've visited most places, and that, of course, is Treehouse Dam. Indeed we are. We're knocking about here just in the hope that one of these spotted cats decided to just come down and have an afternoon drink but alas nothing i suppose taylor should come and check now that i've been there because this morning i was at trials dam three different times and then only once i went did that line come out and come right behind me and walk on my vehicle tracks the whole way from gary main so maybe she should try and one of the cats might be there you never know it seems the way it's gone today i did find tracks also of Tundi crossing into Torchwood from Cheetah Cutline side, which I forgot to mention earlier. So it seems like pretty much all the leopards that we've been tracking all day have gone to boundaries at this stage, which is the way it goes. Frustrating, but the way it goes sometimes. And you've got to just remember that yesterday we had three leopards, so you can't complain too much and we can't get too down about it, even though we wish we found them. It would be nice if all of them were still here, but it happens this way and it's good to have days like this. It makes you appreciate days like yesterday that much more.
what we do have is a beautiful orange sort of glow in the distance now the sun has just gone down and I'm going to stop shortly so you can see what I'm talking about because it's difficult for Craig to expose me in the dark Land Rover as opposed to the sort of fiery red orange sky that's in the distance Craig what do you want do you want a dead tree a live tree what do you want to show the beautiful colors dead tree oh I don't know if I've got a dead tree Craig hold on now we're trying to find a tree that will look nice silhouetted against what we see but so far I can't find really too many at this stage because it's quite bushy here what about this marula tree maybe this one will work and let's just see a little bit forward no not working as well as I wanted it to but we can just use the general bush outline there as a way of looking at it but that's where the sun is busy setting at the moment you can see it is very orange it's much like what we had yesterday when we were sitting with Mvula and I can tell you I'd be quite happy to be sitting with a male leopard in a tree with that as a backdrop right now so hopefully we can find one of these naughty leopards that have given us the run around today somewhere in this area I'm also going to head now quickly to the hyena den and on my way I'll look for the leopards but my focus is going to be hyena den and see if it's not active again after this m afternoon when we started we had a brief visual of Intima so I want to try and see if I can't find um, the den site active and see if the adults are not there just before it starts to get dark so that's the plan for the rest of the drive and hopefully we will have some measure of success because it's been well pretty disappointing in terms of everything else we've tried this afternoon but one person who has succeeded in her plans and what she wanted to achieve is Taylor McCurdy and it sounds like she's got a golden maned lion sprawled out in front of her we do indeed have the golden main line. Look at him, he's standing right next to us, as in right next to the car. It is so cool. I'm so happy. Oh, hello. Are you going to give us a roar? And he left a present for us too. How lucky are we? He is really a beautiful, beautiful male lion. He's just listening at the moment. beautiful big lion yawn they definitely do it better than leopards and what are you going to do now he's just pause don't please don't use the luxury facilities right there we are right downwind of you Whew, thank you <laughs> that would have been terrible i probably would have put that car never oh okay i thought i was going to say i'm going to have, would have put that car into reverse quicker than any of you could have ever imagined uh, now we, we're gonna have to move you know that Seb because I don't know if we can face Tinior we right basically right directly in the firing line right now let's re let's go reposition <laughs> Seb have you ever had to run away from a flatulent line before it's ridiculous it's he did that on purpose I'm telling you he did that on purpose we'll just go around again but well there's the action everyone at least he stood up once for us and did a big yawn and I hope you all got some good screen captures we're not leaving don't worry in case you think I'm leaving we're just gonna go back around hopefully he'll stand up again he hasn't started grooming himself but all those yawns can be a good sign though sometimes cats do do this they'll yawn look stretch groom themselves and then go back to sleep again we've actually seen that on a number of different times with the pride here we go Now Tesla, who is seven years old, of course we were talking about Tesla with her long locks, golden locks, just like mine, her and Tula Ann, got the same colour hair. Anyways, uh, your question was, will he eat birds? He will go after birds if he gets desperate, but at his size, he'd need to catch hmm, a southern ground hornbill perhaps, or an ostrich, maybe an ostrich, to have a decent meal. But he's not really going to go after that when there's many other antelope that he can catch. Or he can go after a buffalo or a zebra. You see, he's very capable of taking down big animals all by himself. So, not at this age. But when they're younger, when they're like the age of the Nkuhuma cubs now, they're normally quite keen. But even they've started, I don't know if you could say, weaning off of birds. 
because a couple of months ago when those little little lines when they were little they're not so little anymore when they'd see any movement they would jump up and start stalking trying to you know sort of practice their hunting skills but they have stopped doing that for now but perhaps something like a squirrel or even a mongoose would entice sub-adult lions and make move a little bit quicker ah oh, well Maybe he's going to get up again. We'll stay with him for a little bit longer. We're going to send you across to Tristan very quickly, who has not got a beautiful animal to show you, but he's got a beautiful skyline. We do. So we've managed to get a better view of what was going on than what we had earlier. And that is spectacular, isn't it? What a way to finish the day. It's been a quiet day for us, but that is definitely worth every minute of being out here for. So nice, and the bush is just starting to quieten down now as well. You know, all the diurnal animals are starting to go to sleep. No birds are calling too much, and it's just so nice to watch the sun sort of just disappearing below the horizon. Look how fast it's moving. Now, Craig and I have a bet as to how long it's going to take from going the top of those trees to down and Craig said, what did you say, 2.47, 2 minutes and 47 seconds I said 2 minutes and 35 seconds so now we're trying to work out how quickly it goes from the bottom of the sun touching the horizon to the top of the sun dropping below it so he's recorded it and we're going to play it back just now and see exactly how long it is what are we at there Craig? I'm not too sure actually you're not sure? <laughs> we'll have to look back later but there we go. How's that for finishing a day? Look at those colors as well. Wow. And there we go. That's the last of the sun, I'm afraid, for the, the day, which hopefully will bring about more luck for us and we'll be able to find something to see and hopefully something to show all of you. So the, hopefully the den site will be active at the hyenas and we'll be using our infrared so as we don't disturb anything there. And while we do that, I believe James Henry, who's slowly meandering his way back home and out of the park, has found himself something stripy to look at before he goes home. Here's some stripy, stripy zebra things. There they are, wonderful. And the reason for stopping at them is not necessarily just because of them, but because of the view just behind them and the hills into which they're going to climb and possibly up to where we live. We have find them around our tents all the time, every night, and I think they climb up the hill in order to get away from the Amgama Pride, which seems to hunt them mercilessly during the course of the night. Then the last thing I'm going to show you, just before we're run over by somebody and to come past us, I hope, uh, no, probably won't make it past us, is the studio, actually. You can see the studio and the final control up there. There we are. That's the window that we look out of. And you can actually see a camera has been put up by J-Rod. Well done, J-Rod, today. Good job. And uh, the final control is to the right-hand side of that window that you can see there. And uh, they're not allowed windows, no, they mustn't have windows, they must be in their cave. And our camp, if we pan to the right, is just behind there. There you can see a tent, that's Graham's tent actually, probably, is it? No, it might be Louisa's tent actually. Or mine, it might actually be my tent. In fact, I think it is my tent, I think my tent is next to that bush. Hmm. Anyway, that's where I live, everyone. Yes, we'll put a flag on top and then we can discover exactly whose tent it is. No, it's not mine, it's not far. Well, it might be. I can't tell. Anyway, that's where we live and so we're going to head there now before the gates shut on us and we have to spend the night in the rain out here. And 
there wasn't much of a sunset here and of course there was a wonderful sunset that you had at Juma and as the sun sets in Juma, well, hopefully Tinio will get off his backside and do something useful. Uh, for me and Fergus, it's a good night and we'll see you, well, probably tomorrow. Thank you, James, for giving Tinior a stern talking to. I feel as though if he's going to listen to anybody, it will probably be you. Now, it's even though Tinior is just sitting here relaxing, the birds are chirping quite a bit. Now, there's a bird that's calling. I'm going to wait for it to call again, and then we're going to have another quiz. But it's stopped for now, so I'm going to listen out for it. But even better, wouldn't it be great if you could hear the sounds of a lion calling into the night? That would be quite spectacular. But it's promising. He's moved a hole of three meters closer towards Chele Pan. At this rate, he'll be there in about two weeks <laughs> to quench his thirst. Hopefully he does it sooner than that. <laughs> he's gone back to sleep again. Now he looks like he's even deep in sleep. Hang on, there's some antelope alarming. I just want to listen out. I heard an impala snort. Not too, yeah. not you're not too far away from here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have to speak softly. So, yeah. yeah. There's impala alarming. Let me tell Tristan. Tristan, Tristan. I'm trying to find out where he is. Tristan for Taylor. So way weird saying your own name sometimes. Sometimes I think I don't say my own name correctly. Um, Megan, can you ask Tristan to get hold of me on the game drive radio, please? He doesn't seem to be responding to me. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I think there'll be much chatter now. If you can please pass on a message for me, because I don't know if Tristan's going to get through to me now. They're having quite a bit of chat. There's some impala alarming just off of Weaver's Nest, just south of Pangolin Track. They're alarming on and off, so I don't know what they've seen. But we hear them every now and then. If he wants to come and have a look around, I know he's heading to the hyena den, so it might be completely out of his way. We're just doing, playing broken telephone now via final control. Get a message through Justin. Thank you very much, Megan. That's very kind of you for passing along that message. They've gone quiet again. They were alarming you, but didn't really care at all as to what they were alarming about. He's sound asleep now. See, now he hasn't got the bugs bothering him anymore, so he can really have a peaceful snooze. Yes, now the Impala have gone quiet now. It's just the Franklins that are making a noise. Now, Justin, a question from you, and it is, what do I think Tinior dreams about? Mm, oh, my goodness, I could get so creative with this. Right. Sebastian, you better, you better start thinking of what you think Tinior thinks about, because I'm going to ask you just now as well. I think Tinior at the moment is dreaming about laying on the beach in the Bahamas, with a cocktail in hand, reading a good book. No, I'm just joking. That's exactly what he's not thinking about. Um, I'm actually not sure, but they do twitch. So it's quite funny. So sort of as your dog can have dreams, you know, when they start running, even though they're laying on the floor or sort of making strange noises, lions can actually do the same thing. So I think at the moment he is just so full and he's probably so happy that there are no more bugs. He doesn't have to worry about swishing his tail or twitching his ears or biting the air, or swatting his, you know, swatting his paws onto his body. I think he's just enjoying the peace and quiet now. Or, or planning his attack on those Franklins that are making a noise because that could be keeping him awake. Remember, their hearing is so cute compared to ours. So I think those Franklins are being horribly loud. I can't imagine what it must sound like to him. It must sound like somebody banging on a drum right next to your ear. Sorry about that, Tinio. But I reckon if you walked over there, they'd probably get a fright and then fly into the trees. It might make a little bit of a noise. But that's what I think he's maybe thinking about. I'm probably not right though. And I don't think any of us are ever able 
to really understand what the animals are thinking about. I think he's dreaming about donkeys in pyjamas. You think he's drinking? Drinking? Dreaming. No. <laughs> 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 so, so Sebastian says that he's dreaming about donkeys in pajamas, and Project Alpha, you said that he's dreaming about drinking peanut in parlors. <laughs> very funny. Everybody is so witty. Look at you all go. That was very good. I wish I actually came up with that. I might save that and use it for another time because that's pretty good. <coughs> very good. I'm actually going to have to make a note. Ah, oh, you know that's one thing that I haven't chatted about. I remember at one point when I first started at Wild Earth and I was trying to figure out the different characters, I would always say during a sighting, I'm just going to very quickly just going to take a note, make a note about it. And I realise I actually haven't done that for quite some time. I should probably start again. Well, I do always take notes, but just in terms of the dynamics between the various animals out here. I'm actually looking through it now. I want to write somewhere though, and I have to find a pen. Pina Impala. There'll be a pen somewhere in here because I've got about three notebooks. <laughs> Sorry, Tinio, that would loud. I laughed way too loudly there. Uh, so, Project Alpha, the rest of the comment was not only Pina Impalas and getting caught in the rain. Well, if he was in the Mara, he'd be getting caught in the rain out here. There's not a cloud in the sky. Although this morning there were a couple of uh, drops, but not too much. Right, where am I going to write Pina Impala? I think that can go under my, no, it can't go under my name. I'm trying to figure this all out. Pina Impala. Very clever. It's now official, it's in the book. And then I'll have to remind myself why I wrote that. Play on Pina Colada. <laughs> because I could maybe forget about this completely for months and then I'll read it again and go what on earth were you talking about Taylor and then it won't be funny and who knows one day I might snort out laughing inappropriately which I normally do which is always a great conversation starter it always ends in me trying to defend myself and or apologize as to why I did that but very relaxed now he's just starting to open his eyes or at least one of his eyes no, I don't think it's actually completely open. I don't know if he's opened it voluntarily. His mane looks beautiful from this angle. Now, Jason, you're wondering if the scat around him, and there is this bit of impala dung around him, um, sort of will distract the flies. Maybe, possibly, but I don't think it's very moist. So the flies won't necessarily go onto dung that doesn't have any moisture. So like we see what butterflies do, we call it mud puddling, where they feed off of the, the various nutrients from wet, sort of wet mud. Well, I suppose you can only get wet mud here, otherwise it's not really anything. Um, sorry, I just had a moment of <laughs> very quickly thinking out loud. I must remember, I mustn't do that in public. <laughs> Anyways, so, so and not necessarily. If it was maybe a blob of fresh elephant dung or a fresh buffalo patty on the ground, then possibly. But you know what he could do is maybe if he had lighter, he could burn some elephant dung, and that would keep the flies away. That's what I do. That's my favourite thing in the whole world is to burn elephant dung. I haven't done that in a very long time. Although I suppose we haven't had too many problems with the flies, but summer is just around the corner, and those biting flies will be back. And we'll have to swat them away, the poor quarry branches, and African wattles, and all the other things that we use. Did you see that bird that just landed in that tree? You see this one that's dead? Mm -hmm. And there's a branch, a low branch that goes off to the left. I think there's a ground scraper thrush that's just landed in it. I don't know if we're going to see it because it's quite dark. Here we go, yeah, that branch. Who are you? Oh, it's not, it's a crested barbet. Ah, and off it goes. Yes, sorry, it wasn't a ground scraper thrush. That was a beautiful crested bar, but not hanging around for too long, though. Probably off to find a place to sleep, as are the rest of the birds. Well, not all of the birds. Some of the birds are only just starting their night. All right, what are we going to do now? I don't think we're going to go anywhere. We might stay here for just a little bit longer, but we'll go across to Tristan, and for some reason, he's managed to pick up tracks in the evening. 
I have indeed. So we've managed to now find fresh tracks that were on top of our tracks from this morning. And guess what? We've now tracked them all the way off onto Arethusa. So this is tracks for both Shadow and the Cub. Here is the little Cub's track over here, which is very small. You can see if I put my hand next to it, it is a tiny little track. It's got a tiny little pad about that wide at the back. So very, very small. And then these little toes. And then Shadow, she crossed over here. So this is her track over here. And that's where she's crossed over. So these tracks are on top of where Herbie and I were this morning. We were walking around. They lay on the road. It seemed like they were playing. So we must have just been driving around them. And they must have been in the grass close by. And unfortunately, we have now tracked pretty much every single leopard bar Tengana off of Juma, which is frustrating in the least. And what is more frustrating is that I have asked the guys in the West for, well, had they found any of these leopards? And they've said not one. But there the tracks are quite clear crossing over onto the other side. <sighs> so times like this that it can be very frustrating to try and track these spotted cats. I think I'm going to give up on all leopard things leopard now and head to the hyenas. I was just so excited because we came along where we had been driving this morning and there was no tracks and all of a sudden there was just tracks all over the road and it looks like that female and the cub had such a good time playing. And what I think has happened is maybe Shadow has killed something and she's now come and fetched the cub because you could see where she walked all the way along straight to where that Balanite tree is that Brent fell out of. For those of you who don't know, Brent climbed a tree once and fell out of it and it's a big prominent tree on a junction and Herbie was there the whole morning I drove past there three four times this morning and it was really kind of well driven and now there were just tracks all over and I had shadows tracks going and then the cub coming out and the two of them playing so it seems like they must have been there during the middle of the day which is well like I say frustrating to say the least so Back we go and try and see. I just thought maybe, just maybe, they might still be somewhere here. I was really, really, really hoping that they were going to be here. I got so excited about it because I love seeing Shadow and Cub. They're such cool and um, little mom and daughter pair. And well, alas, I think yesterday I got so spoiled. This is nature's way of just bringing things back to a normal calm and to just remind me that leopards are the way they are and are not the easiest animal to find and so well that's how it goes but we do know that at least had we been able to go in the places we would have gone we would have been able to track down most of these because we've at least followed their tracks all the way through so it's amazing that we have in three roads that go off of Juma on this western side so we've got this road that comes out of Impala Plains we then have the power lines road and then the road north of that is the fire break and on all three roads a female leopard has crossed out from last night to today and all three are different isn't that amazing so you all think that leopards don't really walk near each other but they do they actually actually are in close proximity all the time. So Aaron, you reckon last minute leopard is going to reward us for all of our sort of work and trying to follow leopard tracks all around Juma and Tingana is going to pop out. So for those of you who don't know, Tingana has caught the name last minute leopard because he tends just to appear out of nowhere at the most sort of inopportune time which is normally about one minute before we close the show so he kind of pops out and it's a, now become a thing that he just arrives at those times so it's quite funny that you we call him that now you can see wendy's lights just decide to work when they want and that's the sum total of wendy's lights tonight we've tried to fix them and i checked all the fuses i can't get it right so we'll have to have another look and get our light bar sorted so spotting of tracks is not going to be very easy but i will show you shortly where exactly shadow and the cub met up because it's quite cool to see the whole road is just covered in little footprints where the cub obviously was so excited to see its mom it was running up and down and on top of mom and you can see lots of places where it was actually moving quite quickly so very cool to see it would have been really nice to have actually seen the two of them doing it but that's the way it goes and like i say we have to just remember that they are an elusive cat and while we do get so spoiled with them here we could be in a situation where some people who work in other reserves within Africa would give anything just to even see footprints of this number in their area so it's not all doom and gloom and it, like I say it is a bit frustrating that they do go over our boundaries but tomorrow it might be the other way tomorrow we might track them all back this way and we find them all on the roads
So Stara, you were talking about the three leopard sighting yesterday and the dynamics and how interesting it was. It was very interesting, wasn't it? It was nice to see from my side. I know it's not good that Mvula maybe stole Shongile's kill and, you know, she's a young leopard trying to make her way. But from just her sort of interaction with Mvula, one, that he was as patient as he was with her. Now, I mean, I've seen other male leopards that would not let a female leopard get anywhere near as close as what Shongile did. So it was interesting to see just how patient he is with the other sort of leopards that are not his own cubs um, and the other side of it was also just to see how brave Shongile has become and how she's not sort of lying down for anyone she stands her ground and she certainly makes sure that everybody knows that she is the kind of able to look after herself and it was really good just to see that she can look after it and even with Tandi there and Mvula she was still able to show that she can sort of hold her own and that's going to stand her in good stead for later in life so this is where I wanted to show you it's going to be quite difficult Craig I don't know if you can maybe try and I'll use the spotlight as a way of showing it but this earlier today was an absolutely tire filled sort of track there was tracks of tires everywhere and my tires will now be through it because unfortunately i went over it but you can see here where the spotlight is look how smooth it is that's where they were lying down and playing you can see big deep marks in the sand there where the middle of the spotlight is and those are all from where the cub was jumping on mom so that's where her paws have dug in and sort of jumped all over and it's just this whole area is one big leopard track leopard mess and so it seems like they must have had lots of fun and this is where i would imagine they joined herbie walked around here he said the tracks were going up and down and he thought that little cub was somewhere around here and he was absolutely right and had we just like been here maybe a few minutes later or a few minutes earlier we might have found the two of them together before they broke apart this morning so a little bit unlucky but it's the way it goes and like I said, at least Herbie and my suspicions were right. I should have come here first thing this afternoon because I thought maybe, just maybe, it was a good idea. And then I got a bit sidetracked with putting grass in my hair and going to go check the hyena den and Buffelzook Dam. And I should have actually come right here and maybe we would have got lucky. But that's the way it goes. Now I'm going to try and get to the hyena den because I'm still sort of diddly daddling and not actually getting there which is quite common for me I have the attention span of a squirrel and somebody else who often tells me has an attention span of a squirrel is Taylor so let's go across to her and see how Atinio is doing and whether or not he's actually going to decide to even blink in the next few minutes There's another lion roaring in the distance, responding. Well, that was a great link. <laughs> the best link ever. <laughs> I don't know what to say really about that. That was fantastic. Thank you, Princess, for deciding to wake up Tenyo. My goodness. So there is another lion calling. I said to Sebastian a moment ago when he was putting on the infrared. That's why we're in black and white now too, in case you have just joined us and wondering what's going on. We've put the infrared lights on and he was staring into the distance. And first I said to Sebastian, I said, he's looking at something. And then I went, no, wait, hang on. He's listening to something. So obviously he must have heard that other lion, but we couldn't hear, I couldn't hear anything because I listened out, but you know, like we we're talking about just a moment ago, there, hearing is unbelievable so that's obviously one of the other Birmingham boys responding to his call so I suspect that the two of them will meet up but I think the other Birmingham boy is going to have to come here and meet Tenyo because he doesn't look like he's going anywhere at the moment he even roared laying down but it was a good spot that he decided to roar in because his call would have traveled down into this drainage line which we're just on the edge at so I think it would have traveled even further Amazing. Now I'm just listening to the guards on the radio. They're trying to figure out where these lions all are. But maybe that will mean we'll have some lions in the morning for the sunrise safari and hopefully more than one. Wouldn't it be great to see some more Birmingham boys with the Nguhuma pride again? 
that would be absolutely spectacular and I don't think that we're asking for too much we've been very patient with the lions and I think if that male lion that's calling in the distant roars again we might get another roar out of him I can't believe our luck patience hey Sebastian again yes. patience yep. has proved to us that it is completely worth it wow wonderful and now an anti-climax that he's just going to sit here and sleep <laughs> <laughs> Di, you said it was a little bit of a lazy roar. It was indeed. He was laying down. But it just shows you it doesn't matter what position a lion is. It can still let out that bellowing call, which sends shivers down your spine. Not my spine. It gives me goosebumps. Now, the whole vehicle was vibrating. That's another thing. The thing here is hearing it as you watch. And I'm so glad that you got to hear a roar. But what I hope is if any of you ever do get to come on a safari in Africa, I hope that you get to hear a lion do a big roar and you can feel it. It's incredible. <laughs> Jenny, you've said that you think that uh, Tinyo was saying to the other lions to keep quiet. He's still sleeping. He's not ready to wake up just yet. Possibly. He definitely could have said that to him. He's, completely, he's closed his eyes again. He is not interested in anything else around him so I'm really hoping that the lions down that way give another call and maybe he'll stand up and actually just show his sort of full power and full size um, as he raises his head to the sky and starts calling. That would be in an ideal world but I think we just need to be grateful that we got a roar out of him because I didn't think we was going to get up and move at all which is quite nice, quite, quite special. Ah. Oh. Lovely, Laurie, you said that your 10-month-old grandson is smiling. Well, there we go. He's already bit... Uh, no, the safari bug has already bitten him, even though he's never been here before. That's quite nice, actually. Anyone else have any interesting reactions from their pets at home? Not, or, or any kids, you know? What was their reactions to that big lion roar? You can let us know. You can hashtag Safari Live. I'd actually be quite interested to see what a cat or a dog must have done. <laughs> <laughs> Ruchi you say that Tinyo scared your puppy. Oh no, shame did it tuck its tail between its legs and cower. That's so that's so terrible. Now it's obviously an unfamiliar sound, a roar to most domesticated animals. They probably wouldn't have heard anything like that before unless you live near a zoo and perhaps they've got lions or you live on a game reserve. Lucky for your pets to live out in the bush. I think that must be one of the best lives. Now come on boy sit up for us. Oh, there we go. A nice yawn. Isn't him? He's a very vocal lioness. He likes to moan quite a bit. You see him? Oh, it's so tiring. That's the voice that I imagine that Daniel speaks in. I don't know why I think he sounds like that. Now, Izzy, you said that your cat ran out of the room. It's a good thing because this is a much bigger cat. And he looks miserable. He actually looks like he's had a big night out and he's not quite ready to wake up just yet. Come on, one more big yawn. Open those eyes. You need an energy drink. Maybe he needs an energy drink. Just go for a run. That always helps. But now you can clearly see one of his key identifying features, that half moon in his right ear on the left hand side of the screen. Very easy to see. See the direction that he's staring in now, sort of due north, is where those lines are calling from. I want to sit quietly and see if I can hear them again. No, I can just hear crickets making lots of noise. I suspect that is the direction that he is going to move in if he does decide to move though. I'm sure he'll want to check up on whichever lions those are calling, whether it's the Torchwood Pride, because I know the Torchwood Pride was found further north near the Manuleti boundary. I don't know if they've managed to find the Nguhumas. They didn't find them this morning. No, they did find them this morning. I think they did find them this morning. I can't remember. The days are merging all into one now and I can't remember what even happened yesterday. But look how, yes, they're calling again. It's 
so far away that you won't be able to hear it. I think he might respond. Please respond one more time. Is he going to? That line is just finished calling now. <clears throat> no, it doesn't seem like it. Those eyes are getting heavy again. Maybe he'll surprise us though. One more yawn. At least he's looking a lot more lively now. I said to Sebastian at one point, with the way we had the camera framed while we weren't live. If you'd posted a picture, you could cause quite a stir with it because it looked like he was just dead. Oh, there we go. And that is why I have the best job in the world. Me too. I don't think there is a job out there that can compare with what Sebastian and I do, what Tristan and Craig and the rest of the team, even the ladies in final control, who gets to sit in their office, let's put it in the director's perspective, and get to watch this amazing stuff all the time. It is very difficult to call what we do work. I'm not just saying this, I promise you. Because when I go on holiday, I still do safari holidays. Which I think is amazing. Seb? Yeah. Do you have to reach over for a half hour? <laughs> that was great. That was the best kind of lion sighting that you can honestly get. To have him first fast asleep, staring up at the vultures, seeing those beautiful golden eyes. To him stretching, rolling over, eventually giving us a big yawn, showing us a beautiful portrait to ending off in a roar. I think asking him to go and have a sip of water might be asking too much. Don't, <laughs> don't forget the darts. Oh no, Sebastian said I mustn't forget the darts. <laughs> but we're not sitting downwind of him anymore. We made that mistake too many times today. <laughs> right, so Tristan, after taking much time to getting to the hyena den, he's finally bumbled on over there. I think he might have a surprise for you. Well, we have finally, we have found something with spots. It's not what we intended all day, but hello, little one. Is that tasty milk? Yes. So <laughs> you can see that it looks like Intima that's out at the moment. And then that must be Ribbon that's lying down. And Intima's having a really good feed. Ribbon looks as though she's absolutely exhausted at this stage. Now, it's difficult to see exactly who it is because it's pitch black. It's we're in infrared and it's difficult for me to see what's happening. I can't see any signs of any of the other hyenas. They're lying right on the two track as you go towards the den. So I've got no clear view of the den itself. So I don't know if the little one is around or if January might be here. I'd suspect just given how yesterday played out that maybe January is already out and walking around on its own accord looking for food. So it just leaves little Intima with Ribbon and you can see Ribbon's got quite a nice full belly so she must have found food somewhere and Intima looks as though she's very happy having a really nice suckle so at least we found something it also sounds like just north of us there might be some ellies I heard some breaking branches just now which is good news for the morning hopefully they'll still be around and I'm super glad that at least the hyenas are here for us to at least get some reward for our work sorry Craig I haven't given you much to film today so you at least got something now and I would imagine this is the last sort of feed for Intima before Ribbon gets up and starts moving. We know that Ribbon spends a lot of time around the camp, so I'm pretty sure this little cub is going to get some milk now. And then once it's suckled, it'll go back into the den 
and will then go and have a good night's rest. But don't you love the way that they lie? Look at how that back right leg is almost tucked underneath it. It's almost contortionist like. We were talking earlier about the kudu's ability to groom all the way near the tail. But this hyena is pretty interesting too, just the way that that foot doesn't look comfortable at all. But it seems like this little cub is fairly happy the way it is. And you can see her spots are getting quite bold now. So she's lost that more black coloration and now is getting spots all over it. It's very peaceful at the den itself. It doesn't seem like they're at all perturbed by the branches that were being broken. They will probably know that it's elephants and nothing that they need to worry about at all. And that's why she's still fast asleep. And wherever she's been, she's definitely managed to find food last night. Okay, you're awake now. No, back to sleep she goes. But you can see her rate of breathing is quite fast, and that's an indication that she's got quite a full belly. Now, I believe a lot of you are saying how sweet this little cub is. It is very cute. I'd love to see the little one out as well. We had it yesterday morning, but it was such a brief sort of glimpse of its head poking out of the hole. I would love to see it running around and playing because I would imagine it's also super cute and it would be nice to see it kind of venturing. It is a little bit dark for that one. That one's still quite young and so it shouldn't really be venturing out at night. It should be staying very close to the hole and probably lying just at the hole area. But I don't want to go any further forward and disturb these two because, well, mom looks as though she needs the rest and cub is very happy suckling away there and getting the nutrients it needs so definitely won't be disturbing that situation but this IR is absolutely astounding it amazes me that we can sit here with almost zero light and have such a clean picture of these two it just opens up a whole new world theoretically if we were on a game drive we wouldn't be anywhere near here because the lights could potentially attract other predators but we're sitting here with absolutely no lights on whatsoever and that means that we can sit and not disturb these guys at all so it really is cool to have this technology available to us and I'm pretty sure Taylor's been using it with Tinio which is amazing as well and it was cool to hear Tinio we could actually hear him from where we're sitting and some of the other males up in the north and then we could hear it over the radio as well when Megan was talking to us so it was like dual surround sound from him and it is the best sound. I was hoping that if he roared maybe these guys would start whooping. Sometimes you'll hear hyenas whooping after lions roar but I think it's all about nursing at this stage and not too much in the way of calling just yet. But this den has already provided so many amazing sightings. The den, sorry Craig, it's my fault. I'm just zoom release the brake a little bit and um, the den around Philemon's cut line was such a hit and miss den we used to go there so often and see very little whereas this den already seems to be a lot more sort of active it's been here three times and had three times I've seen hyenas at it already so it seems to be a lot more sort of productive what is that is that a night jar oh, that's cool oh, pity it didn't land oh there it has landed that's a brave night jar that's for sure Look at its eyes. It looks it almost like it looks like a freaky bat in a way, but it's actually a night jar. And see how big it eye, its eye is. So that gives you an indication that it's a nocturnal bird. Animals with such massive eyes like that are needed because they need to see what's going on at night. So that's why it has such a large eye itself. Now, Kobe, who's 15 years old, you want to know when will the cubs stop suckling? Oh, have you had enough milk now? Hmm? Yes. Are you going to come say hello? Come say hello. Well, Kobe, they'll stop suckling normally. they fully weaned at about six months, six to eight months. Um, it depends on the, on the female, and you'll find that most of the time, these guys try and drink milk for as long as possible because the milk is nutrient-rich. Are you coming right here? You can see there's the front of the car, so we're going to lose sight of this little one. It's just a little head poking up over the front of the bonnet. Hello. Isn't that cool? It's so cool just to see these little ears over the front of the car. And the little eyes, these beady black eyes, just poking up over. Are you coming all the way to say hello? Don't you bite my tires though. 
So she's just here on the right hand side of the vehicle, pretty much just there. And they often like to bite tires and so I'm just watching her carefully because I've already had to change one tire today and I really don't want to have to do another one tonight. But she's just at the front of the car sniffing around on the bumper at this stage. What are you up to? There's obviously lots of interesting smells on the front of the car. She's probably smelling all of our hands where we've been touching and varying other things. You never know what other animals have walked up alongside there during the night. And that's what she's busy sniffing at. But we can't see her at all just yet. She's going to come around now, Craig, hopefully. It looks like she's coming around towards where the tire is. So I'll just try and move out the way a little bit. Hopefully she's going to come. But she should, if she does appear, she'll appear just where my finger is, somewhere around this area. So that's where she's kind of was walking to. And I'm trying to just get out of the way. But it's proving a little difficult. Sorry, Craig, I just want to see where she's gone. Where are you? Oh, there you are. So, still sitting in front of the car, and it seems like that's where she's going to stay. She was, has found a little scent that's happy to smell around. And, oh, there we go, it's drifted off a little bit. She's in front now. You can see there's without the IR how dark it was, and that's when the light comes on. Now, are you going to go and investigate? It's already old enough now to go quite far from the den. You can see it's quite big. Mary, you're saying they have very strong teeth for their age. They do. They have uh, incredible teeth and jaw structure. And this little one will already be able to dispatch a tortoise and break through a tortoise's shell. I've seen ones of this age eating tortoises quite often in the summer months. So they do have strong teeth and they're able to go through quite a bit. What are you smelling? So she can move around like this because mom is here. So when mom's here, it's okay to move around and to go and explore a little bit. And you can imagine, it's like a kid that's been inside all day. It's now time to be let out into the playground. And so it wants to go and investigate and check what's happening and see how everything is going. And they're so cute when they're at this age because, well, they become naughty and they want to know everything. And this is why they come and sniff at the car and they're inquisitive and want to know what's happening. It eventually they grow out of it and you'll find hyenas like Ruben wouldn't really worry about us too much but little Intima is still at that stage where everything is still an adventure and wants to know what's going on yes we're talking about you <laughs> are you eating grass I mean, sometimes we'll see them chewing on grass it's often if they're teething a little bit they do chew but she should be a bit old now and shouldn't have to worry too much about biting on things for teething problems and back to exploring the car again so there she goes in front now I'm pretty sure she's going to keep doing this and at some stage I'm going to have to move so the next time she drifts away oh there she goes she goes in front of me so little one is going to come just to our side here. So let me get out the way. Hello. What you doing? Isn't this cool? It's no more than I would say, not even a meter from where I'm sitting there. You can see my back and the little cub right here. Sorry, Craig, I'm going to try and move out the way, but I've only got so much space that I can go. No, leave my tires alone. No. Hey, don't be like that. No, don't do that. So I'm going to try and keep Ruben's cub from eating my tires. And while I do that, let's go back to Taylor with Tinio. And hopefully he's behaving a lot better than little Intima. No, stop it. We do. Oh my goodness, Tristan, you haven't had much luck with tires today. Let's not have another incident and have to change another one. <laughs> so you best you reverse out of that sighting but what an exciting adventure it has been on the sunset safari don't you all think from hyena cubs to well the many stages of tenure to animals at Chitwa Dam birds kudus grooming them eat well each other and of course lions and elephants with James too it's been fantastic and I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as we have all our chess so remember to of course join us tomorrow same time same place on the sunset, nope, on the sunrise safari. We'll be here, we'll be waiting. Maybe the lions will be around, who knows? We'll see you all soon.